Senator Atan Achonu. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Once more, I will start by saying congratulations for emerging as the candidate for the Labour Party in the uh, Kinley contest, uh, contested um, election that happened yesterday. Now, you've won the election, and uh, we saw jubilation across the hall yesterday. How do you feel emerging as the uh, Labour Party uh, gubernatorial candidate for Imo State? Hmm. I feel, I feel great. I, it's like a kind of burden has been placed on my shoulders because uh, honestly, I thought that at this stage of my life, I'm just going to go and relax and enjoy my years of hard work, the fruits of my years of hard work. But as, it's, as, as it is now, there is a need for somebody to come and clean up all the mess that have been made in this state. We have been very, very unfortunate because we have had bad governance for years. No development, nothing. Every four, every four years, it gets worse. Every other four years, it gets worse. And, you know, so and, uh, we've been looking at it, you know, standing by helplessly. So... Well, I was motivated actually to now get up and do something about it. You know, I've been preaching this Akurulo over the years. Uh, if you go to every senatorial zone in the entire southeast, you see my billboards asking Ibos to come home and invest so we can develop this place. So I think this is an opportunity for me to put that into practice, to create the enabling environment for them to now come home. Because that is what they have been complaining about, that the governors don't want to encourage them to come home and invest. That they are always fighting uh, uh, businessmen who want to come and invest. Thinking that maybe they are looking at investment uh, uh, from a political point of view, that maybe you are going to use it to create jobs and become more powerful than... It's just because they don't, do, they don't create jobs. They don't bring development. So when you now come as an investor to want to come and put, put down a factory or an industry or anything here, you will say, ah, maybe this man, if he creates all these uh, 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 job opportunities, that he will become more popular than them. Maybe he's coming to run for governor. You understand? Yes. So that has really stopped the inflow of investment into the entire Southeast. So, but especially in most states, you know. So, I, I think I'm going to help a lot in that regard. While you were asked yesterday to address Ndimo before the uh, election proper, mm -hmm. you said two critical things. One, you beckoned on other contestants to step down for you. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you said that you are the greatest investor amongst all the contestants there. Now, for those who do not know, what are those investments that you have within the Southeast in order to make that assertion? <laughs> if I... Right now, they, that, that, and that is, that is the crux of the matter, actually. Because... Uh, all the investments that I have tried to bring have only succeeded in one, the one in my village. That one is hidden in my village. That's why they didn't attack it. Because the first one I brought was this hotel, 10 story building in Oweri here. I wanted to bring Rad uh, Radisson into Oweri. And then I also, I, at the same time, I was going to go to Ubuta. I was going to utilize this proposal. I gave to Hakim when he was a commissioner. Yeah, I think it was during a Wem's regime to develop Tony uh, Ubuta into a tourist destination. For like, I, I was in this competition, I want to bring a boating competition. I, I, want to, I wanted to bring 
and build hotel resorts there, you know, to attract people. And I also wanted to bring Disney into that area because they had a lot of land around that island, you know. So, so you know, and now, and then it didn't work. So when Hakim became governor, he now started talking about tourism, focusing on Uguta as well. So I latched onto it. I said, okay, let me support him. I, I acquired this um, Progress Bank Golden from NDIC to turn it into a five-star hotel. Then I made a bid for 60% owned by Nzema Duako, 60% of Imo Hotel, because they, they have a common fence, so that I can expand into it, build um, a, a mega mall and a conference center, you know, international conference center and a mega mall plus that hotel to support his proposal to turn Imo into a tourist destination. That's one. And then we immediately later as came. Which has fought me, blocked it. He put a stop work order. He came and built a road in the middle of the, the other property, Imo Hotel, Boa Carriageway, in the stack in the middle of it. You know. So then I, I have a, a refinery license. I wanted to build a refinery in Ohio Women. And then the plan for that refinery was to build it have an industrial park beside it so that the same power that you're using for the refinery can support the uh, power need of the, the industrial park so that you can site like 10 factories at that location so you can have power 247. Do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they acquired 47 hectares of land. Then the government came and built a room in the stack there, blocking me from further expansion. And that uh, wasn't there. But because of the fact that I was being fought in a way here, so I didn't want to, my partner didn't want to put in more money. You understand? In that effort. So we stopped there. Then I made a bid to take over in Cargo Airport to turn it into an international cargo hall so that we can create massive employment and generate lots and lots and lots of businesses that will flow with it. You understand me? Mm -hmm. uh, so the government came, I hope Uzodima was chairman um, of the aviation at that time in the Senate. Yes, senior committee chairman on aviation at that, uh, at that period. So the government came, started balkanizing the entire surroundings of Imo Airport, giving out land, you know, making it so that the business will not work. But it didn't deter me. What deterred me actually was the fact that the government was fighting me. So I can't risk, you know, borrowing money to come and invest in a hostile environment. Do you understand? Sure. Uh -huh. So, but luckily for me, immediately a lucky video I came. A lucky video I wrote a letter of apology. You know, I won all the court cases against government. They are not obeying court orders. So immediately a making head and hacking, making head wrote a letter of apology to me uh, regarding the uh, stoppage of work at my hotel, Protea Hotel. So he now encouraged me to now want to bring in further investment. That's how I decided to invest in uh, the biggest fish uh, farm in, in, in fact in, in Nigeria. I don't want to say in Africa. But, you know, because we have a, a capacity to produce one million catfish every month. So, and at that location, we have over 200, we have about 260 greenhouses, which we want to even like, expand more. We're looking for land now, so that our target is a thousand greenhouses, so that we'll be able to supply the entire southern Nigeria with tomato, green pepper, you know, bell peppers and other vegetables. You know, there we have a cattle stocking for 5,000 cattle. So it's going to create a lot of my a lot of employment and generate a lot of other support businesses. You know, that will you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to stay on the part of when you made the assertion that you are the you know the greatest that's, investment amongst them all. That's what I'm explaining. Yes, yes, a new state. A states. Yes. Well, if I just oppose that statement mm. with. Um, Someone like uh, the, I think the Abasa farm boasts of about 5.8 million catfish, 
sitting on a 2.4 kilometer uh, on ethered ground. I do not know, you know, I'm not trying to, but I'm just trying to, you know, wrap my head around the gargantuan nature of this farm. And I would, um, I would say uh, I would like to visit your I farm been, also. I, have, I know, Abbasos, I'm talking of output per month. Okay. I'm not talking of the number of fish that we have. Okay. Both fingerlings from fingerlings to... That's the point, that quantity you are putting is what we produce as fingerlings okay. regularly. Mm. I'm talking of our monthly output every month what wow. we yes what we harvest one million yes wow. every month yes and we're going to increase it to two million actually wow. the, yes so now yes. if uh, if you know there is a long way to the election in november and uh, the people of imo will be listening to us after this interview and what is that that you can see today that is broken in Imo that your emergence will help fix that they will be looking forward at those things you do for them if elected the governor of Imo State. Actually, everything I have done in my life, every business I've tried to let me give you an example. I'm building a health center in every local government in Nigeria, building and equipping because I see the need, the importance of health in a society. In every local government in Nigeria? In Nigeria, yes. 774. My, my company called Metan Nigeria Limited is ongoing. We're almost concluding now. It started many years ago. But governors kept fighting us, kept blocking it. Governors kept saying that the money belongs to them, local government money. They, you know, this, most governors see it as their pocket money. For example, in the state, they have not conducted any local government election up to date. And if you investigate, I don't have that fact, but I know that if you investigate, I'm sure I have that belief. If you investigate, you see that they are not releasing any the local government money to the local government. To, you understand me? To use for uh, projects in local government areas. I can say that with a, a lot of certainty. That, because so I, this, I don't see anything going on in my local government. So this project you're talking about is a federal government I'm, I'm project that you are. I'm, coming. I'm trying to explain to you, answer your question. Okay. You said, what difference will I make? You asked sure. a particular exactly. question. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you that everything I've done in my life hmm, lends credence to the fact that I'm development-oriented. That's why I'm giving you that example. Okay? And right now, we have almost concluded that of human states. That's as a private citizen. These are ideas I bring to government. I generate these ideas present to government and they approve and we implement. Okay, now, like I gave you the other ideas about the airport, and that's why I was giving you those ideas. I gave you the idea about the final... So, job creation is one of the most basic ingredients that can aid in stoppage, stoppage of insecurity. And I have been ch championing Local government autonomy, political and financial autonomy. Over the years, since Obasanjo, uh, the of Obasanjo left, I started championing it. When local governors started fighting local governments over mayor health center, can you imagine? And this health center was going to take one year to build, and it was just going to take deductions from the accounts of local governments for just one year. Can you imagine what local governments would have achieved by now, since they have the capacity to build that thing from their, their allocation? But because these men we have, po have been pocketing these monies over the years, that's why you have insecurity. Because there's no activity at the local government level. So why am I? Why was I? Have I been championing this autonomy? If you had can elected councillors in all the local governments in in, in 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 a state, for example, huh? You have elected councillors. Hmm? Where will the criminals hide? These councillors will know everybody who live in their ward. Are you following me? Uh -huh. So when you have once you have effective local government system, you have security. Are you following me? Uh -huh. So and then this world councillors also will be getting some projects for their various words. So money will be flowing everywhere. And if you look at my billboards, my Kuruba billboards, you see how I've been advocating that communities should um, form vigilante groups with their town unions. Okay? So that 
they can uh, uh, protect uh, the farms and then they, uh, uh, protect the people as well. You understand? Uh, so when you now have autonomy of local governments, these things will be put into practice. So you see, everything I have done, eh, I think, or everything, all my proposals to towards uh, this uh, 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 implementation of my Akurulo, there yeah, are things that governors are supposed to be doing. If you look at one of the messages, I said that the southeast governors can build a, an interconnecting rail line south in the for, that will connect us to the south south. Since we have been abandoned by the federal government, and they should do such things. You understand? This is we improve commerce. So basically, from what you are saying, you mm. have the view that uh, mm. one of the reasons why in the last elections the sort you know, comments that were made in Lagos, for instance, happened as a result of us not really thinking ahead of time. Yes. So, so let me tell you why the Igbo man is frustrated out of his domain. Do you know why? Okay. It's only in the southeast and south south that if you go every one kilometer, you see police checkpoints. Hmm? They are treating us like a conquered territory. And the governors are not resisting it. Every one kilometer, you see custom checkpoint. You can't see that in the southwest. You can't see that anywhere in the north at all. They don't, they don't exist. And all the smuggling is done in the north. Meanwhile, you will not see custom checkpoints there. They are done across border. The, 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 the most smuggling activities are done across all their land borders. And the southeast doesn't have any land border except the one in the uh, south south in Calabar or somewhere there. Are you following me? Ah. So, but they don't question it. Okay, look at you. have a place like Borono, where you have all these terrorist activities. You have Zamsara. You don't see all these checkpoints. But here, yeah, where they are, so, so the last 20 years, the, this thing has become so controversial. You understand me? Every time will be, people, businessmen will be crying. Drivers of the association will be crying. Nothing is done about it. The government has not do anything about it. Do you understand me? And so that was the driving away our traders. So that because they, 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 they have it easier in Lagos, in Kano, in Abuja. Are you following me? Uh, so these are the things that we need to do to bring them back home. You know? Thank you very much for that. Yes. Um, yesterday, I, I read reports that there were, after the convention here, that there was another convention also. Are you perturbed by any time? If there were any sort of uh, con uh, convention that happened, a parallel one. So. No, I mean, it goes to show that, it goes to show the popularity of um, the Labour Party. You understand me? And the viability of Labour Party's opportunity to take over power in Imo State. So all we need to do is to bring everybody back together. We are a family. Labour is one family. If there are misunderstandings, we will resolve it. You understand? Uh, and then take it from there. So what you're saying, in essence, you would, if there is any sort, you would go out of your way to ensure that... No, it's not out of my way. As, a, as, a, as the candidate of the Labour Party now, it's my duty to bring all my colleagues together. We are, we are, members, we are, we are members of the same party, Labour Party. If there were any misunderstandings in the past, it's my duty now to resolve such issues so that we can forge ahead. From the comments made yesterday during the uh, primaries, mm. where there appears to be a candidate so favored by the uh, the party actually, obviously things didn't pan out as they probably had planned it. Now, what would be your next? Approach? My what? Your next approach based on those, you know, yesterday we saw people stepping down saying that one uh, a certain candidate is being uh, uh, supported and obviously after that election so we all saw the way they left the hall what is the next line of action no that candidate actually that candidate i had approached him earlier before the election that i mean i gave him a proposal that we should work together uh, so i still spoke to him after that election i hugged him congratulated him for a good fight you understand? But you see, you see, you see, expect such things in politics. You know? Uh, you can you know, expect gang ups and all that. I mean, 
we are, this is Nigeria. People have vested interest in some people for one reason or the other. Do you understand me? And maybe people are, and that is not a, one mistake that a lot of politicians make. They want to uh, uh, support somebody they think they can control. You can't control anybody with power. It has never happened anywhere on earth. Even your son. You give your son power, you can't control him. So that is a very big mistake people make. And every time they get disappointed, they shoot themselves in the foot. So I, I was, I just, you know, I took it in my stride. Do you understand? I, I, I see that as a human failing. All those, you know, uh, plans to do this, do that, you know, so. In, in Imo State, you know that the security is a great challenge. Yes. Um, you defeated a general, a captain, and also a retired inspector general, uh, acting uh, assistant inspector general. Mm -hmm. What would be your security strategy to ensure that security returns to Imo State if elected the government? <laughs> you know, in the you, you know the uh, the generals, um, the captains, the generals, and then the AIG, they have not seen war. Do you understand? I was I witnessed the Biafran War, the Civil War. I created my own army during that war after the end of the dissolved the boys' company. I was very young. I had my own army. You know? So, and then being a general, once you are retired, you are retired. Are you following me? You are a captain. Once you are retired, you don't have any command under you. AIG, once you leave the force, you don't have any unit under you. Are you following me? So, you become like every, the rest of us. So it now depends on who you are, your character, your contacts. Are you following me? Uh, that is what is going to determine how you're going to perform. And then the ideas you have, the ideas you have, you know, to challenge the situation that you're describing now, the security situation in the state. The, the plan, the idea, the strategy, that is, that is what matters. Not whether you are a retired general or after all, we have Nigerian army. We have all the generals. Boko Haram has been creating havoc in the north. We have army. We have air force. How many generals do we have in the army? How many do we have in the air force? How many do we have in the how many, how many AIGs do we have in the police? Boko Haram is run, running offshore over, over the northeast. Are you following me? Yeah, so it doesn't depend on that at all. Hmm. Okay, finally, before I let you go. Yeah. The election yesterday, we read media reports saying that... Uh, it was heavily financially induced. Is there any atom of truth in such reports? I, I don't know what they mean by that. So nobody has told me that. I'm just hearing it from you for the first time. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sidney. Thank you for having the time to speak to me today. Thank you very much. You're welcome.